Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today on the DCC Guy, I want to go ahead and give you an introduction and an overview of the Switch 8 accessory decoder from NCE that I use here with the push button uh, control panels on the Piedmont Southern. But before we get started on that, I want to ask you one more time, do me a favor, subscribe to the site. I've added a little red button right here on the bottom right hand corner of your screen, it says subscribe. All you have to do is click on it with your mouse and you'll be done. That way you'll get notifications from YouTube in the future when I upload new videos uh, in this and other series. Okay, let's get started. This is the uh, Switch 8 accessory decoder. As the name implies, it has eight outputs, one through four and five through eight, with an A and a B. The A and the B is where you attach the wires to your tortoise switch machine. And every time that you hit a push button or a toggle associated with this, it will reverse the polarity at these outputs. So you're switching the polarity and the, tur and the tortoise or whatever switch machine will go ahead and reverse direction. Okay. Uh, these are designed to be used with tortoises or other slow motion type switch machines that are rated at no more than 40 milliamps. Okay. So you can operate one 40 milliamp switch machine or two 20 milliamp ones. This comes in very handy at crossovers where you have two turnouts and two tortoises, one controlling each, as you can wire those together and uh, control both with one output. Other things of interest on the board, we have here a barrel plug. You can see it plugs in right here. That's for the DC power input. And we have a screw terminals here for the DCC input. And right here, there is a switch that selects between the DCC and the DC input power. Um, and I'll get into that in more detail in a minute. Other things of note, we have a push button here for selecting the output. So there's a LED mounted on the board right here behind each pair of outputs. You can see these. They will light up as you select the different outputs. And that's used for programming uh, characteristics of each output. And then when you get ready to program, you hit the program output button and it starts this little display here flashing to let you know you've got 60 seconds to do your programming. Okay, the other component I have here is called the button board. Now in its default state, the uh, switch 8 is programmed to work with toggle switches to control your, um, your turn turnouts. And it can also be used with DCC power and a throttle or a computer or your command station to control these. So you have the option of using it with or without uh, toggle switches or push button switches. Now, in order to use the switches, you have to have this button board. Okay. And on the button board, it has these two sets of screw terminals with four pairs of outputs on each. They're here labeled 1 through 4 and 5 through 8, A and B. I'm sorry, N and R, for normal and reverse positions of your turnouts. Okay? So you would simply put your output wi uh, your input wires from your switches here, and if it's a toggle, and you would be toggling back and forth between your positive and your negative polarity. So you have two wires going in, one to each of the outer poles on a toggle switch and the center pole going to the ground here. And there's four positions here for connecting ground wires. And each time you throw your toggle, you're connecting either the normal or the reverse to ground and it will automatically switch the uh, switch eight output polarity accordingly. Now with a push button, because there's only two positions uh, on a push button, um, one wire is connected to either of these two outputs or inputs, and the other is connected to ground. And each time that you push the little push button, uh, it will toggle it, uh, with it by programming. So it toggles this output to plus and minus based on a single push of the, uh, 
of the push button itself. Now the connection between the two is simply three wires. That, there's a, a screw terminal here and here for the button board. There's another one here for what's called a relay board, which uh, they haven't released yet. So you would simply make a connection. There's a data, a plus, and a ground connection here, and the same thing over here, and you just run the wires. And I'll show you that in a minute with one that I'm going to set up. Okay, I've gone ahead and installed the uh, Switch 8 and the button board on a piece of hardboard using double-sided foam tape, like I mentioned earlier, and this stuff will hold for, for decades. It's, it's been my experience. I've also uh, used a spring-loaded kitchen cabinet uh, hinge that I get uh, from the local hardware store. And what I do is I attach this to the underside of the layout, and then this can be swung up out of the way during operations and swung down for wiring and programming and things of that nature. We'll get to that when we get to installing this on the layout. Okay, so I've gone ahead, I've installed these two on the button, on the uh, hardboard. I've gone ahead and made the connections between the button board and the switch eight. You can see the wiring here. This is the ground, this is power, and this is data, the white one. So it's a simple matter to run these, uh, these wires between them, connect them with the screw terminal. No soldering involved. The other thing I've gone ahead and done is I've added a push button switch here uh, to the inputs. Okay, got one input to the uh, position one, which controls output one. And the other leg goes to the ground connection here. Okay, so that each time that is pushed, it will toggle the output between plus and minus. Over here on this side, on the output, from position one. I've got one wire going directly to a tortoise switch machine here. The other wire goes through a pair of LEDs, the green and red LED, and then on to the other leg of the motor contacts on the tortoise switch machine. Now these two LEDs are wired the same way I showed you how to wire them on the control panel. So I'm just show, put, uh, put this in here to show you the red and the green shift in polarity when we toggle the switch 8. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make a DC connection, or DCC connection, excuse me, by connecting the clip leads directly to the track. Okay, you can see we've gone hot, and the green light is on now. What I'm going to do is go ahead we're on DCC, but I'm going to push the push button. And you can see the tortoise has changed position here. And we've switched, and the red light is on instead of the green light. Okay? Push it again. Everything toggles back. The uh, turnout returns to its other position. The green light's on. And we're waiting, we're waiting for another action. Now, another thing that I can do here is... I can control this using a power cab uh, throttle. So we can just select accessory one, okay, comes up automatically for one, hit enter, and it's going to ask me do I want normal or reverse position. I've hit position two or reverse, you can hear the turnout move. We can select that again, okay. Select that again, do it, and hit 1, and it will return to its other position. So you can use either a throttle to control your switch machines, or you can use the push buttons. That's with DCC controlling or providing power. And what if I switch it over here? I'm going to disconnect it, and I'm going to connect it using the 12 volt DC supply. And the last thing we need to do is switch it to the DC power position. Now, it's running a little bit slower because this is a 12-volt DC power supply, whereas we're get, getting about 14 volts uh, on the track power. Okay. By the way, this can work with anything from about 9 volts to 15 volts DC. 
So with 12 volts DC, it's going to run a little bit slower and it'll be a little bit quieter. Um, again, you can see that we're toggling the LEDs along with the turnout every time I push the button here. Okay, so that's with DC on. What about if I connect it to track power? at the same time. Now, even though it's powered by the, the uh, DC power, see I've got the position set for DC, I can go ahead and toggle it using DCC controls. Okay, That's part of the versatility of this. So it gives you that option as well. So you can power it and control it using either DCC using DC, or a combination of both. Now, why would you want to be able to do that? Well, let's assume that you've got a layout that's DC powered. You could use this with a DC powered layout. You don't need this DCC connection at all once it's programmed the way you want it. So that's one option. Another option or reason is, let's say that you have a short at a turnout uh, due to a, a, a locomotive derailing or a locomotive running into a frog with the polarity switched against it. Well, the only way you could clear that is to throw the turnout. However, uh, if you're shorted and your DC system is shut down, you can't change the polarity because you don't have DCC power to do it. However, if you've got DC power feeding in the unit, you've still got your push button to clear the short. So that's one reason, another reason why you might want to use the combination of DC and DCC. Now typically what I do is I have a 12 volt 10 amp power supply under my layout that powers a power bus, a DC power bus uh, that runs the entire length of the layout. And that provides DC power to all of my accessory decoders, my uh, LEDs that I use for lighting buildings and the like, and anything else that runs off of a 12-volt uh, of DC power supply. So um, I wrote about that in, in my books and, uh, and in various articles, so you can take a look at that in your own time. Okay, let's go ahead and get ready to do some programming. Okay, as I said earlier, for programming, you need to hook the unit up to a DCC power supply, like this set of trucks. Uh, under normal conditions, what I would recommend you do is have uh, an, uh, a connection directly to your command station and disconnect it from your truck. The reason being, you don't want to inadvertently program anything else on your layout while you're reprogramming your, uh, ex your accessory decoders. Okay? So, Simply disconnect your system from your layout, run a couple of wires out from there to the accessory decoder, and you're ready to go. Now, let's say I'm going to get this set up uh, so that I can go ahead and, and do the programming. To do that with the uh, ProCab, or PowerCab, excuse me, you push Program and hit button 7. And that will get you into ops programming for accessory CVs. Okay? Um, then you want to select your output 1. I'm going to change it so it will toggle back and forth using the push button. Okay? And if you'll note, there's a little red LED on behind output 1 now. Okay? And it's flashing 1 here, indicating that it's ready for programming on output 1. Okay? Um, I'm going to go ahead and hit enter, and it's asking for the accessory address, and it's 1, so I'm going to hit enter again, and it's going to ask for the CV number. Now, we're going to program CV 548, okay, and then hit enter, okay. Now, what I want to do is hit this button here, the program button, and you'll see it's flashing a P. Okay, now I'm going to set that to a value of 1 and hit enter and you'll notice it's gone back to 1 and it stopped that rapid P flash. That indicates that programming has taken. And sure enough, 
I can control it using the push button. So folks, it's that simple. Now, if you don't have a uh, NCE system or one that has a specific accessory programming mode, then you just use ops programming using the same steps as I showed you here. Select accessory address or local address one and program CV54821. Now there's a number of other things that you can program that are described in the manual and the instructions, but I'm not going to go there with you. It would take uh, a lot of extra time and these videos are getting a bit long. So that's pretty much it. It's a fairly simple, straightforward system, easy to reprogram, easy to set up and use. And uh, in the next video, I'll show you how to make the final connections between each of these outputs and all of my tortoises, as well as finalizing the push button connections. So that's all I have for today. I hope you found that an informative introduction to the Switch 8 accessory decoder. Next time on the DCC Guy, we'll be wiring the accessory decoder to the control panel that we've been building here in previous episodes. Finally, in the last episode in the series, we'll go ahead and install the control panel as well as the accessory decoder on the layout and give it a test drive. So stick with me on this, we're almost done. Uh, in this final sequence of the video, I've added a couple of uh, links two other videos that I think you might find interesting, as well as another one of those red buttons down here on the right hand side of your screen to subscribe to the channel. So go ahead, click on it and give me a boost. Thanks a lot. Have a good week and we'll see you later.